Hi, and welcome to the Hazura Cloud Extended Video Recordings. In this first video, we'll be actually doing a in-depth overview of the creating a project and making tables, adding data, and connecting them all together. If you are not new to Hazura, this will be mostly review. Feel free to skip to the next video where we'll start to look at 2.0 features in depth. For this first video, I will assume not a lot of familiarity with the Hazura Cloud platform. We're gonna go ahead and hit login. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, Google because that's what my existing account is. And it's a simple social sign on where you can go ahead and choose any number of primitives to log in with. But in my case, I happen to have that. We have an existing project in here, the shapes library from the one minute overview videos. If you want to see those, we'll have a link for those available. But I will go ahead and make a new project here and to con continue along with this learning uh, structure here, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new project called colors. I'll choose all the standard defaults here. You could change the region, you could change a number of features here, but in my case, I'm just gonna stick with the default, which is just fine. In my case, it might take just a few moments longer to initialize because this is US West in the States and I am recording out of Germany. But I will go ahead and hit launch console because that happened really quick. And we're gonna give this a few minutes just to go ahead and warm up. Looks like it's already done. And now I am inside of my platform. Let's go ahead and have a look at the data layer here. And when I look at the data layer, we'll notice that there's no databases and that is to be expected. In Hazura, starting with 2.0, you can bring your own databases, you could add multiple databases, you don't need a database to actually create a project, and these are some of the changes we've made. What's gonna be special about that is that we have a whole bunch of newly supported database types already. We'll be bringing in support for BigQuery, MySQL. By the time you're watching this video, those might already even be in place. Do check the documentation uh, about that. But in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and connect a brand new database, and this one's gonna be a simple one from Heroku, which just provisions a little Postgres database for me to work with. While that's happening, I'm gonna explain the data project we wanna actually create. We're gonna go ahead and create a table called colors, and we're gonna go ahead and create a table called uh, palettes, and we're gonna connect those two with a relationship, and we're gonna actually have to use a uh, kind of a join table to achieve that because what we wanna have is sort of a many-to-many -many relationship here. Now, it's already uh, finished here, so we have the Heroku app Vast Journey, which I like a lot. We're gonna go ahead and hit uh, the, the public schema here on that database. And I will go ahead and initialize my first table, and I will call this one uh, Colors which happens to correspond with the project name. I'm gonna choose from these frequently used columns here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a UUID. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a created app. I'm gonna go ahead and create, uh, grab an updated app, which are just really good base columns to have on nearly every table that you've created, uh, which is why we've got these sort of helper utilities to just grab them uh, real quick. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a name and I am going to give this a text field, and I wanna go ahead and identify that my name is unique because I just wanna make that be an enforced thing in my project. We don't have to, but I will do that in this specific uh, model. And from there, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a very simple uh, hex value here. And I'm going to go ahead and give this also a text value. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose the uh, unique value there is because I don't want to have these uh, hex values re uh, repeating. I'm going to show one interesting functionality about the uh, application here and when, about the Postgres type supports we have. I'm going to go ahead and choose RGB and in this case I'm going to go ahead and choose this as an integer but I'm going to go ahead and use the Postgres database uh, array syntax to say that we want to go ahead and support this as an array value. I'll make this as unique as well. And I will go ahead and mark both my hex values and my RGB values as nullable because I wanna say that I could initiate these colors without actually having to provide those values. From there, I can see that I have my uh, primary key already identified, uh, thanks in part to the, the first value marked as unique there. And I can see that my unique keys are also identified. I'm gonna go ahead and not modify anything else yet. We'll come back to do some modifications here in a moment, but I will just create this table as is. 
And with that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, we'll see that it's all created. I'm gonna go ahead and just create a couple of quick entries here. And I'm gonna just give this one here uh, a color green. And uh, I'm going to be very original here with my RGB values. <laughs> and we're going to go ahead and say that uh, those, those RGB, so this was going to be 0, 255, 5, and then 0. I'm going to go ahead and copy this value for uh, using here in just a minute. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. Now it's going to give me this same input form field again, so I can go ahead and add a new value right away. I'm going to go ahead and make uh, blue in this case. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, just continue to use these values. So now we have uh, RG uh, blue. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that as my field there. I'll go ahead and say uh, insert that. It's insert again, but it's creating a new entry here. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know, let's go ahead and just, uh, let's just finish it <laughs> with the red value in there as well. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just drop that in the front. All right, we have our RGB entries. Let's go ahead and browse the rows to see what we've got. And lo and behold, we have red, green, blue. Uh, I, <laughs> it seems like in reverse order, but that's just fine for what we need. Let's go ahead and add another uh, table here. We're going to go ahead and create our palettes table now. And I'm going to go ahead and give this again our uh, defaults that are, are pretty good to use in most every case. Um, that's just kind of something I'm, I'm accustomed to. I'll give this a name here. And I'm going to go ahead and say that this is going to be the column type of, uh, of text again. And that is going to be unique. And the uh, ID is going to be unique again. So we have those values here. And I'm going to actually leave that as is for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and create this table. And now what I want to do is I want to actually support the ability for a many-to-many -many relationship where I'm going to connect these two together, but I need to add a third table here, which will act as sort of a join table where I can then identify unique entries across all the across all the fields here. Okay, let's go ahead and add a new uh, column. Sorry, a new table. And this one is going to be called uh, palette color. I spell palette correctly, palette color. Give this a plural. And I'm going to go ahead and give this again a unique identifier. Give this again the uh, created at and the uh, updated app. And now we have our values there. What we need to do now is we need to give this the color ID. And this is going to be a UUID. And this is going to be uh, the, the palette ID. I need to spell palette correctly. Here we go. All right, palette ID which is also going to be a UUID. And now what we need to do here is identify that the ID is unique. We need to identify that color and palette both need to be uh, not available as null. So they need to be, they need to be uh, created as, as required. Uh, that being said, they will not be unique because it could be that I have multiple colors attached to multiple uh, palettes, vice versa. So we're going to go ahead and leave this as, as our entry as is. So we're going to go ahead and mark this and say, OK, add table. And now we're going to start our relationship building here. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to my colors. Or actually, I'm going to start with the palette colors here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a relationship here. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and create the relationships uh, between ultimately our colors and our palettes by using this join table. So we're going to go ahead and work on the relationships here specifically. What I want to do is allow a, a array relation type, which is going to be from the, I'm going to go ahead and call this the uh, colors. And that is going to be from the colors table. And that is going to be from the color ID of my local table 
to the ID of the colors table. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And then I'm gonna do again the reverse side where it's gonna be uh, from where I'm essentially connecting now to the palettes. I'm gonna go ahead and configure a new relationship and this is going to be an array relationship to the palette. I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, palettes. And I'm gonna choose the uh, palettes table and this is going to be the palette ID is the ID on the palette table. Okay, let's get save. And now what we're going to do is go to our uh, data and go ahead and connect a couple of these here. So let's go to palettes. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new palette uh, here, insert a row. I'm going to go ahead and call this simply the RGB palette. And what I want to do now is grab that UUID that was created. So once I grab that ID from my palette, I'm going to actually create my palette colors through the graphical interface using a mutation statement because I think that's going to save us just a little bit of time. I'm going to switch over to the API here. You've already seen me create content through the form fields. So when I'm in here, what we're going to do is go ahead and expose the IDs first on the colors. So let's go ahead and grab the, uh, just grab the name and the ID while we're at it. All right, and there we go, format. All right, so now we have the IDs here. What we're gonna do is switch to a mutation statement now. And I'm gonna say mutation, and I'm going to go ahead and say, insert the palette, uh, yeah, insert palettes, or insert palette colors, excuse me. And we need to go ahead and grab the objects here. And I'm not gonna worry about handling conflicts because there will be none, this is an empty table. And from there, we're going to go ahead and sort of build out a little bit of a uh, sort of a template, if you will, for the rest of the colors. So let's go ahead and drop down here. I'm going to go ahead and grab the palette ID, because I already have that in my my uh, my paste. So we have the ID there. Let's go ahead and fix that formatting. And now we need to go ahead and create the color ID, which we're going to just steal from right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and grab green first, and you know what? I'm going to grab it with the quotes included because that's just going to save me a few seconds. We'll go ahead and paste that in there. We have the first object now that we want to create. The palette ID plus a color color ID creates a new palette color uh, entry. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab that. We're going to duplicate it real quick. I'm going to grab the next ID here for the blue value. We're going to paste that inside here as well. And now we're going to go ahead and grab this one, uh, which is the red value. Oops, I needed to create my extra template. Let's go ahead and make the next template here. All right, so now we're inserting three entries, three objects here inside of the uh, palette colors table. So consistent palette IDs from top to bottom, uh, but now what we need to do is insert the unique color IDs here to indicate the rest. You'll see that I'm getting a, uh, an alert here because I do not have the returning fields yet, which is part of the graphical uh, GraphQL specification. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to go ahead and expand on the returning values of that insert uh, command. And so we're gonna say, just grab me the ID of the returning the returning fields. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and what we're going to get is three inserted values inside of the, uh, the palette colors table. Let's have a quick look. And there we go. It looks great. So I'm going to go ahead and hop back over to the API Explorer. We're going to just uh, show how that now looks. And from here, we're gonna do a quick check to see if that's actually working. If we go to the palettes, we're gonna notice that we don't actually have the palette colors yet to drop down on, and that's because we haven't associated the relationships yet to connect these two tables together via the join table. Let's do that real quick. We're gonna to go to the data tab. And from the data tab, I'm gonna go ahead and go to my palette colors field and directly to the relationships tab here, we're gonna go ahead and assign these really quickly. So I'm gonna choose the array relationship and I'm gonna go ahead and call this the palettes first. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and tell this that I want to connect to the uh, palettes itself. And this is gonna be using the palette ID from my current table to the ID of the palette table. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. 
And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the color array relationship as well. I'm using array relationships because I want to maintain this many-to-many -many relationship concept. I'm gonna go ahead and hit configure. And so this will again be a array relationship. And on the colors uh, field there, yeah, I'll give it a, uh, call it the colors field. And then the colors table using the color ID to the ID of the colors table, hit save. And so once we've created those two IDs, I'm gonna hop over to my uh, palette My palette now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add one more relationship here, and I'm gonna use an array relationship. And I'm gonna say that this relationship is going to be called the palette colors. And this is gonna be a relationship to the palette colors uh, table. And that is gonna be using the ID of the palette associated to the palette ID of the palette colors table. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And now when I go to my graphical explorer to test out this relationship, if I go ahead and search now underneath palettes and I do palettes just like that, I can go ahead and explore now on colors and then I can get the name and I'm gonna go ahead and grab the palette name as well. And we'll go ahead and get the actual RGB value. So when I go ahead and do that, we'll see that I have the palette name, I have the palette colors, I have the individual colors and their RGB values. I could make that a little more dry uh, by essentially tracking a colors function directly on the palettes table. Uh, we could do that in another video, but for now this just shows you some of the flexibility you have where you can join two tables together in a many-to-many -many relationship with this idea of a third table. Azura and unlocks a lot of functionality behind the existing databases you have or even new database modeling such as we've done here today. I hope that's shown you how to get started quickly with a new project and we will see you in the next video.